Aha, aha. <laughs> well, I'm listening to Steely Dan's Gaslighting Abbey. I'm here with Freddie at NAM 2020 at the heads at the headstand, and um, these headphones sound incredible. I was listening to that song, Steely Dan's Gaslighting Abbey. It's a good. Uh, very punchy, transient very track. Reason, yeah. So it actually showcases that those are incredibly detailed headphones. But there's something very interesting. Are these like ribbon? They look a bit like tweeters. What's going on here? Yeah. So they're actually not ribbons, but they're uh, based on something called the air motion transformer. The air motion transformer works quite different in the way it moves the air compared to planar magnetic headphones, electrostats, dynamic headphones. It's based on a very, very large diaphragm that is folded into a magnetic field. And then you have all these little folds squeezing the air in and out, accelerating the air. So it's really good to catch fast transient material, musical signals with short attacks. This is the kind of stuff it's really good for. Now, this headphone is special in a way because it's the first full range air motion transformer. It's based on the tweeters that we've used uh, in our years at HAT and also in our previous company, Atom Audio. Um, but this is the first time it is built into a full range device. So this plays from 10 hertz all the way up to 40 kilohertz, actually. So I guess that being said then, you could use these as uh, studio monitor, head, mon monitoring headphones, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you could use some the, the relatively flat response. Or how do, you, how do you tweak the kind of frequency response? Well, that's a very good question. Um, so first of all, I consider them to be really, really great for mastering applications and mixing. They are open back, so they are not the most suitable headphones for tracking situations. And they are also, frankly speaking, a little bit more on the heavy side, so you wouldn't really want to move around or be, as for a musician, you know, this might be a problem. Um, the actual uh, key moment for us was to revise or to, to um, get over this, or to, to, to stop the idea that, like in an air motion transformer tweeter, all the folds have the exact same distance and depth between each other. This is a way more complicated and more um, variable system. If you look into a driver like this uh, with a microscope, you would see that in certain segments of the driver, um, the folds are deeper, the distance between the folds are wider, and uh, this is all important in order to get a flat frequency response in a headphone that is actually full range. So how would you say that this technology sort of uh, improves matters than, than your, your traditional uh, driver? What, what is, the, is it the, the, is it the fact that it, you can get a flatter response? Or? No, it's more, there, there is a, a sonic quality in the nature of this emotion transformer that we believed in since we started Adam in 1999. And of course, it's been like a dream for us to finally sit down in the context of this company and sit down and really think, like, is it possible? Can we really turn it into a full range? Can we really make a headphone that is exclusively based on the AMT? Okay. Uh, and so it's closely related to our belief that this is actually a transducer technology that has a lot of key advantages over other transducer technologies. Okay. I, I certainly can testify that there's incredible bottom end response, Thank you. Uh, but not overwhelming and it doesn't sound boomy, it does sound yeah. very defined and, yeah. and clear. Thank you. Which lends itself to, yeah, as you say, mastering. Um, yeah. But in terms of having to drive them, what kind of amp do you, do you really need, spe specialist sort of headphone amp to drive them? Yeah, I mean, they have an impedance of 42 ohms, so it's advisable to work with a dedicated headphone amplifier or um, a stereo a player that has the cap capabilities of driving headphones like this. It's kind of comparable to the uh, planar magnetic headphones that also need a lot of juice to, to work at, at their best. Um, on a phone it would be a little bit on the weak side, but it's also not an esoteric design where you would need like a super specific uh, headphone that is only available from one, two companies in the world or something. So on that, it's quite regular. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean obviously they're quite large for headphones, yeah. but they're still comfortable. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah. Um, do, do you what, what went into the thinking of the actual physical design? The, uh, yeah. the I mean, comfort being a yeah. leading design there? Yeah, so that's, that's also a very good question because um, one of the reasons this headphone is more on the thick and bulky kind of side is that the sound stage is very wide and we consider this to be a really big quality of the headphone. Um, we obviously, we had prototypes uh, where 
the ear pad was a little bit thinner and it made it look better, frankly speaking, but um, the sound stage would narrow and would, it, uh, it would sound more like a normal headphone, but the stereo imaging on this thing is, in my opinion, quite spectacular. Yeah. Um, and it just shows that we, we wanted to have an, a non-compromised sound quality and sound the entire quality. project is based on that idea. Right. And um, uh, from the outer shape, it's, um, that, and that's another very important thing, we wanted to make the driver as visible as possible because it's a very special, uh, one-of-a-kind driver. So this like, explains why it it's, it's, uh, yeah, looks very open yeah. and uh, the outer shape is kind of oriented uh, you know, from the logo that our uh, company has. Okay, so are they available now? They are shipping right now. Right now. And uh, do you have a price point, please? Yes, uh, in the US they are $1,899, uh, including VAT. Okay, so these are certainly premium premium headphones at a premium cost, but <laughs> sound fantastic though. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so w what would you recommend in terms of headphone amps to drive them with? What would be a typical choice? Um, also, we work closely with a company from Germany called SPL. Oh, yeah. uh, they're making amplifiers based on their um, 120 volt technology, so these work really, really well. Uh, but uh, other than that, we've been testing them with uh, stuff from Grace, with uh, a whole bunch of other, you know, like known uh, companies. Also, we work with Cord in the UK on, on the CanGem shows, and they also do a really good job driving them. Okay. Well, Freddie, thank you so much for showing us. You're very and, uh, welcome. Yeah. I want them now! <laughs> there you go. <laughs>